temporomandibular joint. Temporomandibular joint is a synovial joint of condylar variety. So here you are seeing the lateral view of the skull showing temporomandibular joint. Now let's see the articular surfaces. So articular surface, the upper articular surface or superior articular surface is formed by articular tubercle. Mandibular fossa. And non-articular part, it is uh, formed by the, that is the posterior part is the non-articular part, which is formed by the tympanic plate. And the articular surfaces are covered by a fibrocartilaginous layer. And the joint cavity is divided into upper and lower compartments by an intra-articular disc. So this blue colored disc is an intra-articular disc. So that is about the articular surfaces and articular disc and uh, articular cartilage. Let us understand about the ligaments. Fibrous capsule, like any other synovial joint, TMJ or temporomandibular joint, has got the fibrous capsule. And the other ligaments are like lateral ligament, spinomandibular ligament, and stylomandibular ligament. Fibrous capsule is attached above to the articular tubercle, the circumference of the mandibular fossa. So above it attaches to the articular tubercle and the circumference of the mandibular fossa. So along the circumference of mandibular fossa. And in front and uh, mandibular fossa in front and squamotympanic fissure posteriorly it attaches above to the squamotympanic fissure and below to the neck of the mandible. The capsule is loose above the intraarticular disc and tight below the intraarticular disc. The synovial membrane lines the fibrous capsule and the neck of mandible. The next ligament is the temporomandibular ligament. So temporomandibular ligament reinforces and strengthens the lateral part of the capsular ligament and its fibers are directed downwards and backwards and it is attached above to the articular tubercle. So you can see it is attached to the articular tubercle. This is the lateral ligament. So lateral temporomandibular ligament. So above it is attached to the articular tubercle and below posterolateral aspect of the neck of mandible. So you can see it is attached to the posterolateral aspect of neck of mandible. Spinomandibular ligament. Spinomandibular ligament is an accessory ligament that lies on the deep plane of fibrous capsule. So what we are seeing here is the medial surface of the mandible, not the lateral surface. So medial surface of the ramus of the mandible, this opening is the mandibular canal or mandibular opening. mandibular foramen or mandibular canal. So inner side of the ramus of the mandible what we are seeing. The ligament here is the spinomandibular ligament. So 
Spinomandibular ligament, as I said, it's an accessory ligament which lies deep away from the fibrous capsule. It is attached superiorly to the spinosphenoid and inferiorly to the lingula of mandibular foramen. So, superiorly is attached to the spinosphenoid. So, here is the spinoid bone. This is spinoidal air sinus. So, the projection from the spinoid is the spinosphenoid and it attaches to a tongue like projection which is near to the mandibular canal uh, called as lingula. So, inferiorly is attached to the lingula. It is a remnant of dorsal part of Meckel's cartilage. So, spinomandibular ligament is a remnant of dorsal part of Meckel's cartilage. So, let us understand the relations of spinomandibular ligament. So, the spinomandibular ligament is here. So, spinomandibular ligament, laterally it is related to uh, lateral pterygoid muscle. <coughs> so, it is covered by lateral pterygoid, we know it already. It is related to auriculotemporal. So, this one is the auriculotemporal nerve. And it is related to maxillary artery. Here is the maxillary artery. And ligament medially it is related to corda tympani nerve. Medially it is related to corda tympani. Near the lower end of the spinomandibular ligament, before its attachment to the lingula, it is pierced by mylohyoid nerves and vessels. So we can appreciate that in this. Stylomandibular ligament, it is also an accessory ligament of temporomandibular joint. It represents a thickened part of deep cervical fascia which separates the parotid and the submandibular salivary glands. So, here is the stylomandibular ligament where it attaches above to the styloid process and below to the angle of mandible. And stylomandibular ligament, we know it separates parotid from submandibular salivary gland. Articular disc is also considered as a part of ligaments. So, articular disc is an oval uh, predominantly fibrous plate uh, which divides the joint into upper and lower compartments. We can see the blue colored intraarticular disc here. The upper compartment permits gliding movements and lower compartment uh, allows rotatory as well as gliding movements. So, the disc has a concave or convex superior surface and concave inferior surface. So, if you see the disc, we can like this. So, it has got concave or convex superior surface. This is the concave or convex superior surface and concave inferior surface. So, the disc is composed of anterior extension, anterior thick band and anterior region containing venous plexus. It contains anterior extension, then anterior thick band, then it contains uh, uh, inter region containing venous plexus. The disc represents the degenerated primitive uh, insertion of lateral pterygoid muscle. So, we can see the lateral pterygoid muscle here. So, it is morphologically a remnant of lateral pterygoid muscle and the disc prevents the friction between the articular surfaces and it acts as a cushion and helps as a shock absorber. And it stabilizes the condyle by filling up the space between the articulating surfaces. The proprioceptive fibers present in the disc help to regulate movements of the joint. The disc helps in distribution of weight across temporomandibular joint by increasing the area of contact. Now, let us understand the relations of uh, temporomandibular joint. 
So laterally it is covered by the skin. So here the skin is and fascia are removed and even the parotid gland is removed. So laterally it is covered by the skin, fascia, parotid gland, temporal branches of facial nerve. Medially it is related to tympanic plate separates the joint from the internal carotid artery and the spinospinoid uh, with upper end of spinomandibular ligament attached to it. Auriculotemporal nerve, cauda tympani nerves are related medially and also the middle meningeal artery is related medially. So here is the medial view of TMJ temporomandibular joint. So we know this is spinomandibular ligament and uh, we know its maxillary artery is on tremedial side auriculotemporal nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve is also on the medial side anterior relations of temporomandibular joint anteriorly it is related to lateral pterygoid muscle so here is the lateral pterygoid So that is anteriorly related and anteriorly it is related to mesenteric nerves and vessels. So mesenteric nerves meant to supply the masseter muscle. Posteriorly it is related to parotid gland, separates the joint from external auditory meatus and superficial temporal vessels and auriculotemporal nerve. Superiorly it is related to middle cranial fossa and middle meningeal vessels. Inferiorly, temporomandibular joint is related to maxillary artery and maxillary vein. And blood supply, it is supplied by the branches of superficial temporal and maxillary arteries. Nerve supply, auriculotemporal nerve and mesenteric nerve. So, movements of temporomandibular joint, depression means opening of mouth, elevation, closing the mouth. Protrusion, so here in this image we can see protraction or protrusion, so this is protrusion and the second image is retrusion or retraction of chain and uh, lateral side to side movements during chewing or grinding. So these are the movements of temporomandibular joint. So this completes TMJ anatomy or temporomandibular joint anatomy. Thank you.